Fight, are you ready? Combate Global! Oh, what a punch! What an incredible fight! Can you believe what you just saw? We have a champion! There's the skyline of Miami, Florida, where fall feels like summer. That's right, it stays hot out here in South Florida, and it stays hot here inside Univision Studios as we get ready to kick it off. Combate Global, everyone tonight, young, hungry, determined. Well, guess what? They're across the howl up from someone just as determined as they are to stay in Combate Global. Jimmy Smith alongside Rodolfo Roman, our first fight of the night, two guys one, wrestling in Cuba. Now we know how good that Cuban team is, how seriously they take their amateur wrestling. Kiros, same thing, amateur wrestler in his youth, razor thin margins between all these fighters tonight. And they're both hungry. I I've seen Garcia compete here uh, in South Florida as an amateur, great stand up, trained with Roel Romero. It's in fact, he even told them that he... Cuban wrestling? Some, some, something like that? Perhaps. If not, Google it. You know what we're talking about. But it, it, expect a very exciting fight between these two. Very hungry. And as we've mentioned uh, earlier in the pre-show, this is your shot to show what you're all about. Let it roll. Who controls the nerves? Who follows the game plan? We're about to find out. Beatrice Callas, get us started here on Combate Global. Entrando a la jaula, Alfredo García. There's Alfredo García, Cuban flag on his right shoulder, American flag on his left. He did in wrestling as a child in his native Cuba. He's been training in MMA for about six years. He says, I'm, I'm good on the ground. That's where I started. But I love the stand-up. I love the striking. We see that all the time, Rodolfo, is people with that wrestling background. They get a couple knockouts in the gym, right? They land a couple of good right hands. They get addicted to that feeling. Good or bad tonight for Alfredo Garcia? Well, that is the key, but it's a whole different ball game from the gym to the howler. Yeah. This is the real deal. This is no more uh, reality shows. This is uh, what you see is what you're going to get. And I think what's important here for Garcia is that gas tank. You know, they used to finish off their opponents real quick. That will be key here today. Want to get it done, want to get it done fast. Beatrice Callas. Let's find out about his opponent, Chris Kiros. Su oponente, Chris Kiros. It's a story you often hear in MMA. I was a wrestler. I was doing this, I was doing that. I wanted to keep competing after my amateur wrestling career was over. That was Chris Quiros, a wrestler in his youth, just like his opponent, Alfredo Garcia. He said, when I was done competing high school, college, I wanted that feeling again. That drove me to MMA. He's the Island Fights amateur flyweight champion, blue belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So has that decorated amateur experience, he's looking to translate into pro success tonight. If you look at some of the work that he's done as an amateur, right? He had five victories, only one defeat, and that was a split decision. Yeah, two decision defeat, or three, two decision defeat, a split decision win, and a, uh, a TKO and a rear naked choke. So this is a seasoned guy. You could tell from that record that that transition from MMA, from wrestling to MMA, is well worth it. So he is a well-rounded fighter. And as you've seen, Jimmy, wrestlers sometimes, they have a little hard issues gaining that confidence with the striking, but this guy defeats the purpose. This guy is actually very confident with his hands. You see, they're both young. 26 for Garcia, 28 for Quiros. One inch height advantage for Garcia, but the reach, in, reach advantage belonging to Chris Quiros went in about the same. Beatrice, get us started. Y arrancamos con mucha más acción las reglas de la jaula. Tres vueltas de cinco minutos, tres jueces, utilizando el sistema de 10 puntos. Este duelo en la división peso gallo de Sbaud, en la división de division, los jueces son de Georges R. 
Lorenzo Toledo, James Lázaro y Mark Strayson. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. En la esquina azul, in the blue corner, wearing blue, vestido de azul, su peso oficial, 135.2 libras, es oficial weight, 135.2 pounds. Esta noche entra a la jaula a hacer su debut profesional. Tonight, he enters a jaula to make his professional debut. De sangre cubana, repping the 305 Miami, Florida. Alfredo Capote García. Introducing the red corner in the esquina roja, wearing white, vestido de blanco. Su peso oficial, 133.2 libras, su official weight, 133.2 pounds. Esta noche hace su debut profesional tonight. He enters la jaula to make his professional debut. De Tucson, Arizona, Chris Chapo Tiros. El referee. Alan Aveles. Chris, I gave you the instructions in the locker room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch them up, go ahead. Come out, fight. We are ready to go. Round number one. Alfredo Garcia in the blue. Chris Quiros in the white. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah, Jimmy. We are underway. Yeah, Garcia, great stand of great striking. And Kudos told me, look, I want to test my striking. Everybody talks about my wrestling, but I want to display what I'm all about. That's going to be uh, a lot of fun to see two, two of these dudes just trade blows and to see who has the, the gut right to take it down to the ground. That's where it could get interesting, Jimmy. Hey, it certainly could, but it's the, the age old question is La Jaula is the professional ring, the professional cage, the place where you want to test your Ooh. skills. But you test it in the gym and you use it in La Jaula. Yeah, it's a whole different ball game, yeah. Jimmy. How, how many guys have you seen come out of the gym and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And they Can't they wait get to, to the test real myself thing. out, right? <laughs> and they find come out they game day is a whole different ball game. See the Alfredo Garcia just a little bit taller than Quiros, but he carries himself a lot taller, a lot taller in his stance than Quiros. Kudos, of course, fighting out of Tucson, Arizona. Arizona, great wrestling state. How many, uh, how many great fighters have come out of that Arizona? Oh my God, a million. Oof. When you talk about, you know, you got fighter development, you got Arizona with the wrestlers, Florida, you know, you got great fighters coming out here, California. Great centers of MMA, they're all over the country. American Southwest, full of them. Arizona, New Mexico. Good combination with the left hook from Garcia. Oh, good right hand right down the pipe for Quiros. Quiros is so confident with the striking, just setting up, stalking his prey. Yeah, not rushing it, no. to your point, Rodolfo. Very calm, very cool, yeah. calm and collective. Loving the feint, how he feints that jab, follows up with that right. Oh, nice kick to the ribs, but good catch from Quiros. The wrestler now with the body lock, straight to the canvas. Powerful dude. And that one hook in, this is exactly where Garcia didn't want to be early in this fight. This could be very, a very dangerous position for Garcia. Mm. Two minutes into round number one, already hooks in. Thank you. Quiros almost has Garcia completely flattened out. Yeah, he has some victories by way of submission. So he's been working very hard on that jiu-jitsu as a wrestler. And Jimmy, when you make that transition to wrestling to jiu-jitsu, I mean, you, you got the base, right? You got the shooting, you got the grappling. You see Garcia trying to build his way back up. Don't want to get flattened out. That's where Kiros is going to be most powerful. Flattened out, building up a little bit. He's got to move after that. See how he built up and then Garcia, just, I'm sorry, uh, Kiros just flattened him back down again. If you're Garcia, you got to build up and you got to move. And the referee will stop this fight very, very quickly. And he's in very dangerous position here, Jimmy. Now he's trying to do a half Nelson almost there. And you see Kiros now not really, now starting to unload a bit. Garcia's got to move, yeah, roll, Garcia's use not, some funk. He's not answering back, Jimmy. This is about to get stopped, two step minutes and it's over. Yeah, rightfully so. Two minutes to go in round number one and a quick stoppage for Chris Kiros. 
in his professional MMA debut. Man, the wrestler from Arizona, once he got dominant position, never let Garcia off the hook. Both hooks in, great hip pressure. And that was all she wrote. Saw that inexperience of Garcia in bad positions, and it cost him. But a great debut from Chris Quiros. And we will hear from the winner when we come back here at Combate Global. It continues right after this. Welcome inside La Jaula. You'll have other victories in your career. There's nothing like the first one. Beatrice, make it official. El tiempo oficial. Dos minutos y 58 minutos segundos del round número uno de official time. Two minutes and 58 seconds of round number one. And the winner by technical knockout, el ganador por knockout técnico, Chris Quiro. Chris Quiro's 1-0 as a professional, had plenty of energy at the end of the fight. Great job flattening his opponent out and getting the TKO win over Alfredo Garcia. Good right hand, does anyone to test out his striking from the outset, and that's exactly what he did. Great at range, great with his power shots, excellent with his defense, his range, his timing, all the intangibles you look for in someone's pro debut. He had it, here's the mistake from Garcia through the rib kick, easily caught by Quiros to the body lock and takedown. And we saw the inexperience on the ground when it comes to Garcia, why? Experience is how you deal with duress when everything goes wrong. And this is where everything went wrong for Alfredo Garcia, good hit, good hooks from Chris Quiros unloading on top, ground and pound, not trying to do too much, short, powerful, accurate strikes. And that was all she wrote. Round number one, great finish, great accuracy, great pressure. And the winner right now in La Jaula, celebrating his victory. Won a lot of numbers, why? Because the fight was so short. Nine total strikes for Chris Quiros but they counted. They were on top right to the ears. And our winner, Chris Quiros, in his pro debut, now gets to celebrate with Rodolfo Roman in La Jaula. Bueno, congratulations, Chris. Felicitaciones en esta victoria. How did it feel? First, your debut here, great victory, very, very short and sweet. Tremenda victoria, bien rápida, menos de tres minutos. It feels great to be back in this Combate cage. Like you said, 2019, 2018 was my amateur debut here for Combate Americas at the time. And now it feels like my career's come full circle to make my pro debut here with Combate Global. It's, it's a great feeling. Me, me siento bien regresar nuevamente a la jaula. Pelea acá cuando la compañía se conocía como Combate Américas en el 2019 como Amateo. Y es increíble regresar nuevamente como un profesional. Well, let's talk about this fight. Alfredo came in, also had great wrestling, but Santa, but you told me earlier during this week that you had more confidence in your striking and you wanted to display it. Me dijiste en esta semana que tenías mucha confianza en sus manos, en su striking. Háblame de eso. Y, y cuando te entró la, 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 la that confidence. When did you feel that confidence to throw them hands? Well, all, all this camp, my coach and I have been working, you know, counters, working, being the first person to throw my strikes, let my hands go. I'll give Alfredo a lot of credit. He, he landed a good head kick in that beginning of the first round. I don't know if you're going to show it or not, yeah. but that kind of was like, whoa, it kind of woke me up a little bit. So it made me kind of tighten things up, look for my openings, and ultimately I ended up having to wrestle. But. Okay, tenía mucha confianza en mis manos, claro, mucho crédito para Alfredo. Me tiró esa patada, como pueden ver en la pantalla, pero la verdad que la confianza estaba ahí. Take me to as we look at the screen. You took down the slam, the wrestling coming into play. Very powerful move. La lucha estaba ahí, mucha poder, y aquí lo acabaste. Eh, y estaba esperando el momento para que se metiera el árbitro. You're just waiting for the moment for the referee to step in, because he was pretty much done at that point. Right, yeah, I mean, you know, my wrestling is my base, and, you know, a lot of people say that you go back to what you know, and I think that's what happened today. But I, I felt strong in that position. I could hear my coach telling me to stay calm. You're too high, you know, settle in the position. 
And no offense, but I felt Alfredo kind of breaking down there underneath me. So I figured, hey, why not get out of here, make it an early, an early night. La lucha es mi base y me tenía, me tenía mucha confianza en la, en la lucha. Escuché a mi esquina, mi, mis coches que me estaban diciendo, cálmate, eh, cambia tu, tu postura, pero sigue continuamente. Bueno, who would you, uh, how do you feel about how are you going to celebrate this victory going back home? ¿Cómo te sientes esta victoria? ¿Cómo lo vas a celebrar? Well, I have my coach with me here. I have my grandmother, my nana, my girlfriend, Adriana, over there. We're definitely going to go out tonight, celebrate a little bit, and then just get back to work on Monday. Bueno, tengo la familia aquí en el estudio, la familia, la, la nana y todo el mundo. Estamos listos desde el estudio. Bueno, Chris, thanks so much. We'll see you very soon here in La Jaula. With that being said, we'll get back with mucho más acción inside La Jaula. We'll be back with more action. Welcome back to Combate Global inside Univision Studios. There is La Jaula. We just saw a quick one in a pro debut. Jimmy Smith alongside Rodolfo Roman. Look, Rodolfo, you've been saying the one that controls the energy, right? Controls the nerves. Going to be successful when it comes to two fighters making their pro debut. Chris Kiros did that to a T. He could have fought another four rounds. <laughs> I could be back tomorrow. He was tomorrow. jumping around. I mean, he ready said, to I'll go. be back at trading Monday. He's ready to go. He did. I think he only gets a little scratch on the right eye underneath the eye. That's about it. He's ready to rock. Yeah, but that ability to stay calm, that's yeah. going to be a theme tonight, Rodolfo. What we're looking at tonight is a bunch of talented fighters, all of them looking to make their name in Combate Global, looking to get that first win in La Jaula, which is behind me. So when you look at that, People who fight like Chris Quiros, who stick to the game plan, don't use too much energy, don't go crazy for the finish, and this is our main card tonight, they're going to have success. Is that how you feel? That's exactly what they, just follow what they tell you. Don't. It, it's only a, a time when you really feel it, right, in your gut that you can be creative. But if, if your corner is telling you to stick to the plan, don't break off it, because sometimes that is when you meet with the real deal and it doesn't work your way. Stick to the game plan and, and that calm. You know, it's the first time you're here in La Jaula, you got the lights, all that good stuff. So controlling yourself and most of these guys, all these guys have had five amateur fights as an uh, MMA or a kickboxing. So they've been there, right? So the only difference is you got the lights and the cameras and, and the fans, right? The, 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 the loudness of these people. Keep that tranquility and you can go far, far away, far, very long way. Well, here's what I'm going to try to do, which is stay neutral in our next fight, despite one of them, Royce Butler. Coming from near where I grew up as a kid, San Joaquin Valley of California. He's fighting out of Visalia. I'll try to call it down the middle when we come back here at Combate Global. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Combate Global. You can see the lights above La Jaula. That's what every fighter is going to have to deal with tonight. And there is a tunnel where you feel the tension. Get ready for the walk-in, your first one as a professional. There is none like it. Beatrice Callis, bring him in for us. Entrando a la jaula, Pablo Ramos. And there is Pablo Ramos. His last amateur fight, July of this year, right? Trying to stay busy, trying to stay active. Very important. Early on, early on in your career, you want to fight three or four times a year. And he's on schedule to keep it going. Like I said, last one in July, we're only at the end of September, and here he is. Blue belt in jiu-jitsu, been training martial arts for about 12 years, six years in MMA. So one of those, he's, he was raised in martial arts, now making the transition to MMA. Great striker coming out of the Equipo White Chef in Chile. We've received some of these fighters out of that com compete in San La Jaula, uh, led there by Pablo Burgos, who has also competed down here uh, inside uh, La Jaula, has had much success. And he has that also a background in karate, and we talk about how much that makes a difference as a mixed martial artist. I can just think of a handful of guys that have made it work, right? But hey, it's a, it's a start, it's a foundation. Look for uh, a very speedy quickness in his hands and, and a good, good striker. Should be a fun fight. Uh, he looks ready to go. That tall frame, how will he use it? Beatrice Callis will bring Tomo in his Nente. opponent. Royce Butler.
You know our saying, Royce Butler. Last fight was in June, right? Summer as well, just like his opponent, where he won by decision. Three titles as an amateur MMA fighter at 135 pounds, two titles at 125, and then the California State title, Camo, the organization out in California. Very, very tough, seven and one as an amateur. So he is battle tested in the amateur ranks. This guy picked up championships like the Heat did when they have Butler, Wade, and LeBron, Jimmy. As a as Lakers an fan, I refuse to acknowledge that. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, all right. Some other uh, metaphor. Go it's ahead. It's been a while since we got a championship, all right? I'm, I'm waiting on my Marlins here to pick up a uh, playoff spot. <laughs> Royce Butler, very talented dude, well-rounded fighter. Uh, in, in his in California, phenomenal uh, top athlete. They're taking on the best of the best, picking up uh, multiple championships. Great striking. That is his base of striking. Uh, but watch out for those clinches. He's very effective in that clinch work, uh, but very speedy, just like Pablo. And when you put these two together, man, hang on to your seats. Uh, one thing about Butler, though, his titles were at 25 and 35. This one in the featherweight division. Welcome back to Co Combate Global. It is Pablo Ramos on your left from Santiago, Chile. And his opponent, Royce Butler, on the right, in Visalia, California. And you're wondering who has the karate background? Don't, right? It he is had a bodybuilder pose going on. He had a little yeah. bit of a karate, a little bit of a karate cobra pose. back. Yeah, yeah, but also a little bit of karate <laughs> yeah, pose. Yeah, I saw that, I saw right, that. Good yeah. stuff. <laughs> Pablo Ramos, Royce Butler. See the age difference. Butler, six years older, five foot seven to five foot six, a three inch reach advantage for Butler as well. His weight class 125. Both fighters ready to go in their pro debut. Beatrice, get them started. Continuamos con mucha más acción este duelo. En la división peso mosca, we continue with much more action this bout. In the flyweight division, los jueces son the judges are Richard Green Jr., Lorenzo Toledo, and James Lazaro. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. En la esquina azul, in the blue corner, vestido de azul, wearing blue. Su peso oficial, 124.2 libras, his official weight, 124.2 pounds. Tonight, he enters la jaula to make his professional debut esta noche. Entra la jaula a hacer su debut profesional. From la comuna del bosque, Santiago de Chile, Pablo El Moledor Ramos. En la esquina roja, in the red corner, wearing black, vestido de negro. Su peso oficial, 125 libras, his official weight, 125 pounds tonight. He enters la jaula to make his pro debut esta noche. Entra la jaula a hacer su debut profesional. The Antelope Valley, California. Royce to Smooth Butler. El referee, Ramón Ramos. It is Pablo Ramos from Chile in the blue. Royce Butler from California in the black. Flyweight debut for both of them in the professional ranks, and we are underway. Yeah, this should be a very fun fight, Jimmy. Both yeah. these two just quick, very speedy on both ends. Great striking. Butler, though, he's had a very... Uh, a lot of uh, uh, a long resume as an amateur picked up several titles along the yep. way to make it this far. Very composed, very calm, not moving too much. He likes to switch his stance a lot, throws you off a bit. And both guys claim that striking is their specialty. Pablo Ramos, five foot seven. Royce Butler, five foot six. Looks a lot taller in the jaula tonight. He does. Looks he like sure a lot does. more than a one inch. Could be the hair, Jimmy. Could you and I can have that conversation. Could be the hair. We, we don't have that convo, uh, Jimmy. <laughs> it could be also <laughs> the fact that Ramos likes standing very, very tall. Mixing it up very, very well. Hand to foot, foot to hand. 
Yeah, Butler very composed, just waiting for the right moment. It, it seems more like Ramos is the one that trying to just make it something happen really fast, yeah. you know, just trying to take it in. Man, quick starter, but also Ooh, great right hand there. Do much, set but. an impression. He's willing to strike on the outside Ooh. early. Man, Butler, came man. in like a 99 mile per hour pitch though, Jim. <laughs> Butler taking his time right now. One of the great fighters in MMA, slow starters. Fill you out and then attack a little bit later. Yeah, Butler, he'll tend to as the latter part of the fight goes in, try to get you in the clinch and wear you down. Hard to work that clinch as the shorter fighter. We'll see what he does tonight. Right now it is Ramos slowly working from the outside. Fast and if, with the kicks. And if you're taking on another striker, Jimmy, you know, that, that's a good way to calm down and yeah. stop that strike. You can get him where you want to bring to your own fight. And probably just Ramos banking on that right hand. And so far, good awareness from Royce Butler. Oh, able to see the fight come. Nice counter to the kick. Went low when his opponent went high. Chop the leg out from under him. Calf kicks, of course, devastating. There's not a lot of protection oh, wow. down there. Those calf kicks have been very popular recently. Am I bringing up bad memories there, Rodolfo? Uh, bad sparring yeah. memories? Yep, yeah. that's yeah. what I do. Yeah, took me out for some time. <laughs> Royce Butler, good head movement so far. Hasn't eaten any big shots, but hasn't really found a home for his own offense yet. Ooh. Does have a reach advantage, even though he's a shorter man. Oh, oh, eating oh. up the legs. Got to check it's that. Pablo Ramos. Got to check. Oh. You got to move. You got to do something. Ramos getting flashy. Now those the butterflies and nerves are out. Oh, nice right, right hand. Oh, there's Butler stepping in. Taking on the taller opponent. Want to be in their chest. And there he's going for that. Right to his bottom. Oh, there's in the guillotine Ooh, already. Caught. Almost. Nope. Good job popping his head out. Those long legs of Ramos. Skinny arms, that means mean guillotine. Walking up high with the guard, keeping Butler on the defensive. Yeah, but Butler, what a good way of spending those shoulders, getting himself out of that position. Now going rubber, rubber guard. Leg, yep. Yeah, mission control for Pablo Ramos. See what he can do with it. So good, uh, the rubber guard style, it keeps your opponent so close, it's hard for them to land effective ground and pound. Butler right now staying calm, staying centered. Dealing with a flexible opponent. Stay right in the chest, stay centered. Don't let them cut the angles on you. Don't let them isolate those limbs. Martinez brothers, legs. Richie, Gio, so good at that. Those long legs, jujitsu, Jimmy. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Worst. Get around them as soon as you can. <laughs> you want to sit in that guard, especially a high guard. You know, high guard's an aggressive guard. You're going after the submissions. You're not thinking sweeps, you're thinking submissions with a high guard. Going for it now, yeah, cutting the angle, right looking leg. for the arm. Look for that right arm. Oh, Butler trying to slam him. his way out, and he and does he sure it. He did. going to get himself up there. Good there. transition to the leg lock. Now some ground and pound from Butler, but he has to watch out. You see, so often with these aggressive guards, you get out once, you end up landing right back in the same position. Hey, right. Trying to go for the same movement, man. Same maneuver. Got to respect it. He almost got your arm the first time. He's going again. Yeah, not for it the other arm. It is tight. Going for the oh, other arm this time. It. Butler trying to slam his way up and not pulling his arm out. And he is holding on to that other. 19 wrist. seconds left. Just when I said it, he got armbar once. Don't go back to the same position. Did it again. And he did. Yeah, and he had the opportunity to get up on his feet. Good guard work from Pablo Ramos, but Royce Butler will survive to see a round number two. Okay? 
cuando estaba yendo a la palanca de, de, de brazos, te dejaba los pies regalados. Pablo. Welcome back to round number two. Pablo Ramos in the blue from Santiago, Chile. Royce Butler, California in the black. Flyweights making their pro debut. And it was Pablo Ramos aggressive in round number one on the feet and on the ground. Yeah, and Jimmy, in between rounds, the corner of Ramos told her, hey, be a little bit more aggressive this time around. And look, he gave away the arm. He's giving it to you for free. If when you take it to the ground, listen to me. I'll let you know what you got to do. And you, you know, it wasn't the first time, but that second time he did the same mistake, Jimmy. Gave him one arm and then the other. You're Royce Butler. I mean, that's, that's one thing we haven't discussed a whole lot tonight is, you know, when, when you're starting your pro career, it's who makes the better adjustments oftentimes wins. And if, if you're Butler, you've got to be more aggressive. Got to be in your opponent's chest. He's been on the outside like this where it's been a field day for the kicks of Pablo Ramos. You know, nice forget, calf kick coming in, but not comboing off of that. Forget about that fighting IQ and, I, and, 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 and there's the uh, open scoring, Jimmy. And no surprise here, Pablo Ramos. One round number one on two judges' scorecards, the one that gave it to uh, Royce Butler, probably with the takedown, you know, the, 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 the top game a bit. Now remember, we have open scoring, which means the coaches know the scores and they can tell their fighters. You can know you're ahead, you can know you're behind. I think it's a great addition to MMA. And we've seen how much that has played a role in some of these fights where they're cornered. Hey, you're, you're, you're losing two rounds. It's now or never when they get to the third yep. round. And good job once again on top. Back again, though. He needs is to be looking at Look sitting at that leg. down, getting good position. Okay. Good Great transitions rolling. from Pablo Ramos. Yeah, good stuff. Butler going into side control, has to settle down. And look at that vulnerable arm. Doesn't go for it. Good scramble so yeah. far from Royce Butler. It's the first time we've seen Pablo Ramos in a compromised position. The fighter from Santiago, Chile, was in full guard, round number one. Where you don't want to be is turtled up. Yeah, good way up. Scrambling. Going to Kimura, trying to roll through. Kimura trap position. Homan steps over your head. You got a problem, though. Right now, Butler staying composed. On top, working the ribs. Yeah, letting those shots at the ribs. Trying to but soften them up, trying to get him back. Perhaps if it's back flat. And the fighter and from the San Joaquin Valley, Central California. And look at that arm there, Jimmy, that he's left going arm. Kimura, but he's not going to get it without his hips activated. He's got to roll through it, and that is dangerous. Butler needs to pull out that arm as quickly as he can or adjust his position there more, take it to the center. And this position a lot of guys use now is Kimura trap position. Davi Hamosh, great grappler, great fighter. He loves this Kimura trap position, but it comes with its risks. You got to know what you're doing. And nice roll through for the roll. leg lock. Butler bringing the leg back down, kicking out, defending very well, but Ramos tenacious, deciding to give it up, going to his back. The drop kicks, Jim. He has those long legs. Good way of Butler is centering himself in the middle of the howler. Butler letting Ramos back to his feet. I found that a little bit surprising. Most success he's had so far in this fight has been on top. Fatigue starts setting in for both fighters. You can feel it, can you not, Rodolfo? Yeah, the, yep. the, the energy level here has been just brought down a tad bit, but they're still in the game. Yeah, fatigue makes cowards of us all. It's who deals with it better. That's the question. And it shows the type of fighter you are, because when you're so fatigued, Jimmy, that your, your mind, your, your strategy, it's just, it's just a blur, right? And if you're able to really compose yourself and still go through, stick to your game plan or make those adjustments they told you in between rounds, that just makes you the fighter that you are. Elio Grace, he used to teach his students, he said, you're all my size eventually. Yeah. Right? I may yeah. be smaller than you, but a couple hours going to be my size. I'm going to wear you down. Royce Butler now using that clinch game you talked about yep. earlier in this fight. He said he's got a great clinch game. If he gets it, starts working it, he can do some damage. Trying to do it now, but Ooh, hard to do elbow. as the... The shorter fighter. And that's what he needs. That, that, that's the strategy that he should stick to to wear down Ramos. We know that he's very effective on the ground. We know that he could be a very big trouble for Butler. Butler, that clinch work here could be very effective. Ramos thinking about the head and arm throw. Very, very dangerous throw in MMA. 
He's thinking about it. Hands locked over the head and the arm. Dangerous for both opponents. Good counter throw from Royce Butler. That head and arm, Jimmy, could go both ways, yeah, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> either works great or works terribly. Yep. Royce Butler on top. 10 seconds left to go in round number one. A fighter from the Central Valley of California finishing strong as the Chilean looks for a comeback in round three. While he's coming in, okay. you can offset when he throws, throwing simple shit. Offset, offset, and throw with him. Okay. Seems a little longer than I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. Offset with him. We're one and one. This one, we got to win this one, okay? And you are now inside the Howla. Looking at Royce Butler in the black. His opponent, Pablo Ramos, in the blue. Both fighters making their pro debut to start of round number three. First round, Pablo Ramos on two judges' scorecards. Don't know the scores yet for round number two, but I'm guessing this is just about all tied up in round number three. I would say so too. Now, correct me, did I hear Butler say this is going a little longer than I thought? <laughs> or is it, did I get that? Or is it, I think that's what I heard, right? Could be going a lot be longer wrong. than he thought, but he's got a tough guy in front of him. Can't expect the easy finishes in your pro debut. Pablo Ramos out of Santiago, Chile. Come some of a hotbed of an MMA. They've done very well here yeah. at Combate Global. Yeah, and, uh, and, and that's what Butler needs to know. Offset, coach was telling him his feints are going to be effective to throw off Ramos in clinch work. That clinch work. We saw it in the second round. The try at the knee. As for Ramos, get him to the ground. <laughs> and here are the scorecards. And yep. Just what we thought. Tied on two judges' scorecards. Whoever wins this third round is winning this fight. This is it. This is it. They tell you in the gym, finish strong. It's all tied up. And remember, the coaches are aware of the scores. They can tell their fighters. Went for the home run there. A bit of a slip from Royce Butler. But the success he's had has been on top. I'm surprised he's gone this long without a takedown. Let me tell you, Jimmy, we've done here in Combat with the open scoring. It seems like everyone else is leaving in the Stone Age. It's so great it's to have that open scoring. Beyond me that it's not everywhere. Fighters have a right to know where yeah. they stand in a fight. I don't Just know what like the secret is. Yep. You're going to get it either way. And now they are throwing leather. Good high kicks from both fighters. Royce Butler has been under attack in round number one. Found his groove in round number two. And Ramos switching stance. Butler taking note. Very calm. Right now, it's Butler controlling the real estate, pressing forward, but needs to throw some punches and kicks with it. And he needs to do something, and the pressure is coming from him, but something needs to come down from those hands. We haven't seen a ton of combinations from None. Butler. Yeah, it's been, no. it's been calf kicks. You see that leaping left hand? No right hand behind it. It's been one and done so far. Hasn't been a great co is combination puncher tonight. Ramos has great beat. Ooh, we got a little creative uh, spinning. Back oh, fist, but oh, ended up ah, on the ground exactly where he doesn't want to be with Butler on top. Uh, Butler rides this through. He has 222 here, yeah, but he has to be careful. Leg lock. Leg locks are dangerous in MMA. You pull your Ooh. opponent right on top of you. He's trying to set up a triangle here, Jimmy. Yeah, trying he to find is. something. He, he has to free that bottom leg to get it working. Just did, but he has to step over the shoulder now and back to rubber guard. A nice high guard underneath the armpits for Pablo Ramos. It served him well in round number one. Ramos searching and searching. Good way for Butler of escaping, taking the fight to the feet. Good. 
A minute 40 left in round number three. Right now, it is anyone's fight. Crowd here knowing it. Fans are in it. Exciting stuff from these youngsters. Yeah, both these fighters want to start out with a win. It was Ramos aggressive early in round number one, but as the pace has slowed, it has favored Royce Butler. Yeah, Butler here, he's in control. It seems yeah. like he's taking the wheel, directing the fight where it wants to go, well, slowing, he's setting the pace, right? Yeah, and in Ramos' style, so much about range, right? Yep. So much about having an opponent exactly yep. where you want him, and, and it seems like without Ooh. that range, he's having a little trouble finding the target. His punches have been a little bit short. Butler, good job turning over that right hand. Ooh, that left hand, a good yeah. counter from Ramos. Neither fighter giving up. Final minute of this fight. That's Ramos, dude. I mean, was those, those calf kicks were working very well for him in that burst. I haven't seen much of it. Once again, Another he went for it. Another spinning yeah. back fist, and once again on the ground. Nobody there. Ooh. Oh, Butler, a little. That are showboating there, they didn't work out. And also letting his opponent up. Right. He's had so much success on the ground. I don't understand that strategy. This is where he wants to be. Thinking uh, heel, hook. heel hook. Hard to get standing up, however. You got to get your opponent off balance to make it work. And really close to La Hala, yep. too. It's going to be hard to roll through that. And it looks like we're going to see a final bell. Going hard for the heel hook. Can he get it with seconds Maybe left? He's saved by the bell. The answer is no. Both these guys thrilled, showing respect in their pro debuts. But only one of them can walk out a winner. Who will it be? Beatrice Callis will let us know. These two warriors showing each other respect. Who will get the win? We will find out here at Combate Global right after this. Stay with us. Welcome inside La Jaula. We are awaiting a very tense decision of a very close fight between two pro debuters, Beatrice Callis and the suspense. After three rounds of much more action, this is the final decision. Después de tres vueltas de mucha más acción, esta es la decisión oficial. El juez Richard Green Jr. anota 29 a 28 a favor de Butler. 29 to 28 in favor of Butler. Lorenzo Toledo anota 30 a 27. 30 to 27. And James Lazaro, 29 to 28. 29 a 28. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Todos a favor del ganador por decisión unánime. Royce Butler! That shake of the head from Pablo Ramos. All you had to see, the fighter from Santiago, Chile, knows he did not finish strong enough tonight. Close fight, first two rounds. But it was Royce Butler had the energy to get on top, score the ground and pound in round number three. Also controlled the real estate and La Jaula. That was the story of the fight when it was in close, in tight, up against the fence. And that's when Royce Butler did his best work and two ill-advised spinning back fists as well. And that's the kind of thing you learn as a professional. Find out what doesn't work. Those spinning back fists let Butler inside, get on top, score the ground and pound. And what was a very close round number three that could have been the difference, almost getting the heel hook. At the end of the round, time was up. The winner, Royce Butler, by unanimous decision. Punches on the ground from Royce Butler meant so much in this fight. And it is Rodolfo Roman in the howler with him. And Royce Butler thrilled his first professional win. He has earned it. Let's hear from him right now. Bueno, felicitaciones a Royce Butler adentro de la jaula, un pro debut profesional, el debut aquí pues con una victoria y él dijo entre asaltos que estaba sorprendido porque la pelea duró un poco más de lo que él anticipaba. Royce, you, you said in between rounds that 
you saw the fight going longer than what you expected. What led you to that thought in between rounds, man? Um, he's, he's a lot tougher than I thought, and uh, his range was a lot better than I thought. He was in and out, and I thought I had him, but I didn't run. I didn't want to run into any shots, so I played it kind of safe. That's that's on my part. I, sh I should have pushed forward. Got try to go for the finish, but uh, I'm, I'm gonna learn from this. Intenté de poner más presión. Me me sorprendió. Era bien fuerte, bien poderoso, y, y tenía mucho pues de el striking, ¿no? Que me, que me, me llamó la atención mucho. Vamos a ver un poco aquí el repaso de lo que ocurrió en esta pelea en la pantalla. Royce, let's take a look at some of the action that took place right here. And, this, and I want to talk about that first round because he had you in an arm bar. You had it in the right. Then he switched it to the left, right? Yeah. And in and, and el primer asalto, tenían, te, te, te viste en un problem, problema con la mano derecha y la izquierda donde te llevaba una llave de brazo. Pero, ¿qué aprendiste? What did you learn from that? Um, don't leave your arms out there, you know. Stay close. Day one information for, like, wrestlers and stuff. Keep your body closed. Close that gap so your arms will get extended like mine almost did. Bueno, lo que aprendí es, es básicamente que no dejar las manos ahí abiertas para que me lo pueda agarrar. Y bueno, vamos aquí. Uh, Royce, what can you tell me about this? What, what's next for you, man? Um, probably go back to the gym Monday. We got, I had to go back on my teammates here for their fights, but me and my coach will be talking and you probably see me before the end of the year is up. Bueno, all right. Esperamos que me pueda ver bien próximamente aquí. Voy al gimnasio el lunes y luego próximamente te al final de año. Me venían donde me meten aquí en la jaula. We'll be back with more action inside La Jaula, Combate Global. Let's go. Welcome back to Combate Global. That is the eye of the tiger. You are seeing the ladies about to kick it off for us. Beatrice Callas, get us going. Entrando a la jaula, Valentina Meyer. There she is, Valentina Mayer. Talk about her strengths. They are on the feet. Excellent kickboxer, nine and one. No surprise, big fan of Weili Zhang. He says her striking is key. Athletic track and field athlete who then transitioned later in MMA. You see that every now and then in combat sports. A lot of times it's soccer, great win, right? Great gas tank, great, you know, um, Athletic conditioning translates well to MMA. She's one of those. And she is very powerful. Look yeah. out for that right hand. Get very close, and that could be all she wrote. As you mentioned, that background in kickboxing, effective kicks. So that's going to be the key. And you talked about that background as an as athlete in track. Uh, track. It, 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 you know, compared to soccer, so she has that explosiveness, yes. you know, and, and just bam, right there, which is going to be very effective, especially if you're finding a girl like Nicole. That explosiveness combined with the right hand makes her so dangerous. Beatrice Callis bringing her opponent. Su oponente, Nicole Aguirre. We said earlier on this show, certain fighters have that eye. They have that something that makes them combate global fighters, right? They go in not to win, but to destroy. Nicole Aguirre, she's one of those. Fantastic finisher, two amateur fights, one professional. All of them finishes. Very, very rare at this weight class, but she has that gift. She has everything well-rounded and yeah. all of the discipline. When you see this young lady, great Muay Thai. I was really impressed the way she used that teeth to keep her opponent the past the last time we saw her inside La Aula and that striking. And we didn't even get to see some of the ground game. She didn't need it. She did not need to. But she had the black belt jiu-jitsu. Very effective, very powerful young lady. Should be a banger here tonight. Yeah, training out of the Alliance Gym, Angie over Kill Hill. Great Muay Thai fighters out of there. It's going to be a stand-up war when we come back to Combate Global. Welcome back to Combate Global. On your left, Valentina Mayer. On your right, Nicole Aguirre. 
That's right, Mayer fighting out of Santiago, Chile, quickly becoming a hot spot for MMA. Nicole Aguirre out of San Diego, California, training with the Alliance Gym. Maybe you've heard of Dominic Cruz, I don't know, Angie Overhill, Over, uh, Overkill Hill, great fighters coming out of that camp. Jimmy Smith alongside Rodolfo Roman. What we're looking for here, we know about the well-rounded skills of Nicole Aguirre. It's her ability to finish and her ability to dominate on the feet that might make this fight a striker's delight. What do you think? It's going to be a fun fight, but look like that Muay Thai, that team. But I, I'm, I'm really curious to see, because she's a well-rounded fighter, to see what she's on the bottom of the ground. I, I want to see it, you know, as you evolve, as you start moving up, more, more opponents, you're able to bring out those tools that you didn't, weren't able to use in that first time around. As for Mayer, she's coming in, she got the, she got the nerves, she got the butterflies yep. the first time she's in the holla. Nicole's already been here. And she had a very successful career as an amateur. And Mayer, though, she has that long resume as a kickboxer, demolished all of her opponents as an amateur. Again, look out for that right hand. That could be very vicious, but I'm sure Nicole did her homework on her. She's not going to get too close to not get hit with that right hand. Now, if you, of course, are cornering Mayer, yeah. are you thinking, watch out for those early attacks? Watch out for the quick finisher to kind of put you on your back foot early. Survive that first round and will make the necessary adjustments. Are you getting her ready for a long fight in this one? That's what I'm curious as we see the head to head. Every fight you prepare for five three minute rounds, Jimmy. There's no one hitter quitter here. This is La Haula. Anything can happen. Mayer, absolutely. Try to see if you push it to the second round. Plus, I don't know if she shows you have you evolved as a fighter. Yeah, and it's not about the numbers. It's about the heart, about the adjustments, and the nerves. Beatrice Callis, get us going. Continuamos con mucha más acción. Este duelo en la división peso gallo. We continue with much more action this bout. In the bantamweight division, los jueces son the judges are Mark Streisand, Richard Green Jr., and Lorenzo Toledo. Y ahora. Damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. En la esquina azul, in the blue corner, wearing blue, vestida de azul, su peso oficial, 133.2 libras, is her official weight, 133.2 pounds. Esta noche, entra a la jaula con una derrota, she enters la jaula with one defeat. De Temuco, Chile, Valentina, La Guerrera, Mayer. Introducing the red corner, La Esquina Roja, wearing green, vestida de verde. Su peso oficial, 136 libras, her official weight, 136 pounds tonight. She entered La Jaula undefeated as a pro with one victory esta noche. Entra La Jaula invicta como profesional con una victoria. Repping Guatemala from Washington DC, fighting by way of San Diego. Nicole Nomas Aguirre. El referee, Alan Aveles. Instructions in the locker room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch them up, go ahead. Come out fighting. A lot of times in a fight like this, we talk about the range, we talk about the height, but look at the frame of Man. Valentina Mayer in the blue. Girl. She is strong. That's what I'm telling you. We are underway power. round number one. Nicole Aguirre in the green and red. Her opponent, Valentina Mayer, in the blue, but she Ooh. is stocky, she is strong. Yeah, that lot of power from those hands coming in from that shoulder. But it, it's how you use that power, Jimmy. You know, you could be stacked in the shoulders, but the power comes from the yeah. you know, from the way you position your feet, the hip, the body, that rotation. Comes from the technique, and we know yep. Nicole Aguirre has that in spades. Very technical. Good leg kicks, good combinations, as we saw last time out. And Mayer moving a lot from the outside. Yeah, you could you could tell that Mayer just wants to brawl just a bit here. But Nicole, very technical, strategic, trying to fight the fight that she wants. Very calm. I just wonder about Mayer and this pace she's setting in that, round number yes, one. Yes, that's what I was about to place. tell you. you that know? she's moving from left to right and all of that, and that just sucks up your energy. In the gym, you always teach: never set a pace you can't nope. keep. If you're moving a lot in round number one, you better be ready to move a lot in rounds two and three. 
you tend to see it in the lighter weight classes, right? But, but you know, we talked about the, the Alliance gym where Aguide trains, you know, Dominic Cruz, that was his gym. He started it. That guy could move for 25 minutes at the same pace. It was Best unreal. Gas tanks in yeah. MMA. And the way he's able to switch the stance, keep going. Yeah. You think he's out, but he has more to give you. Back on Nicole, just trying to set up what she wants to hit, strike. See those teeps? Very, very powerful. Love it. You talked about it, Rodolfo, too. You know, you start working on, all right, I've got my first win in the belt. Maybe, maybe the nerves are a little better. Now I'm going to kind of take my time and see what I can develop in my MMA career, right? Yeah, and now what Argita's trying to do is she's trying to use the feint to force Mayer to drop those hands to connect with the kick, Jimmy. I think that's the strategy she's going for trying to throw her off. But she's moving so much. And when you move so much and you get into it, sometimes you tend to forget to keep your hands up, Jimmy. Good job countering so far her shorter opponent. Man, the damage Montana has been Mayer. done. Look at Mayor's face already, Jimmy. Already There's starting to redden up. up. We're at the halfway point of round number one. A couple of dents already. Oh, shot to the groin. She's ready to ride. Let it keep going. Mayor in the blue, angling on the outside. Fighter from Santiago, Chile, 9-1 as a kickboxer. 0-1 oh, in her pro MMA career. Nicole Ooh, picking her apart from the, from the outside, kicks. now getting aggressive. Yeah, she can't get in that bra. She's, that's where you lose all the energy. And Nicole knows it. And yeah, Gide now wisely moving out of punching range. I think she respects that right hand of Mayer. Uh, that, that's, that's the deadly weapon that she has. Man, the maturity and only her second pro fight. Oh, yeah. Gide impressive, so man. Just impressive. Acting like it's a sparring session. Man, I, I, it's, uh, yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly, just, it's exactly it. It's what her body language is telling me. That's exactly it. She's so calm. Not being taken by that quick, that, that footwork from, from Mayer. Nothing at all. Just picking and choosing. Not wasting any shots. She's not even breathing. I, I not can't even, even touch. She's even breathing hard. Good job keeping her opponent at distance. Nice hand to foot combinations. The defense from Mayer, but it's going to get through at I'm some point. I'm telling you, yep. she's backing on that, Jimmy. She's just waiting. See how she gives those teeps, very effective. Right Pushing now. her off. Yeah, Mayer just overwhelmed by those combinations. Doesn't know what strike is coming. It's too late. She's always gonna try and brawl her way back into the fight. She has faith in her power. She's gonna go to. Look how confident Nikita, Nikita is. Yeah. She, she has her hands out trying to switch stance, trying to throw her off. That's what I mean about it. kind of looking like a sparring yep. session. Like she's trying to like the, she's trying to work on the thing she's not good at. Right. The foot got caught in the top against the touch of gloves there. And they're trying to push forward off the power punches. Finally has a Gide backing up. Something. That's some clinch work. Gide now wisely going to the clinch. Oh, watch out with the shot there to the top of the head. Pulling forward is Mayer getting the body lock. Good physical pressure, but dealt with well. By the fighter from San Diego as we exit round number one. We talked about the finishing wow. ability of Aguide, but it was also just the technique on display inside, outside. Good combination, working the head to the toes. Everything you're supposed to do, Rodolfo. Exactly the textbook strategy. Let's take a listen in between rounds. What Mayor's corner is telling her. Mm -hmm. Breathe, breathe. Breathe well. Let's take a look at the highlights of that first round, Jimmy. It was Mayor trying in that right hand, moving back and forth, right to left, trying to angle. But the question is, how much energy did she use? Will she bring in that energy to the second round, or will it go down? But Nicole Aguirre, very calm, very patient, picking and choosing. Working, like, like you said, Jimmy, almost working on their deficiency against Mayer. All right, and then which is in between rounds, he said, the coach, let's see if you can find the takedown. I think he's seeing what we're seeing. 
which is, again, a very comfortable with that stand-up. Her Muay Thai is looking real sharp. Let's, let's flip the script here. Let's try something else. Uh-huh. But at the same time, those teeps, it's not allowing her to go in for those takedowns. Those kicks. Easier said than done. Hey, yeah. go for the takedown. Okay, let's see you do it. But the thing is that Mayer's, <laughs> not, with those kicks. Mayer's not fainting. She just comes right at you. She's not trying to no. take her away. So the, the takedowns will not be there. You have to use some of that feint. And what's interesting is that there, there's so much movement on the outside from here. Right. Angle, but when she comes in, it's a straight line. She's not angling and coming right. in. Right. Movement on the outside, when you're too far to come in, too far out to come in, it's, it's wasted movement. It's a, it's, it's a waste of energy and a waste of uh, effort there. It is Valentina Mayer in the blue from Santiago, Chile. By Nicole Aguirre. Trained out of San Diego, California. She's in the green and red. And she tried to grab that left leg, but you get it quickly to push it back. Oh, great There's that clinch. clinch work. Oh, and she is. Takes the will right out of you. Mayer trying to punch her way out of it. Mayer's corner telling her nothing's happening. No surprise here. Nicole Aguirre up on all three judges' scorecards, 10-9. Dominant round number one. Not exactly in the 10-8 range yet. Aguirre, though, just put, picking her opponent apart. Now, how do you get back in this? If, if, if you're mayor, you know, you could bull in for the takedown, angle a little bit more, maybe some more feints. What's your key to feints, success here, Rodolfo? Feints, feints. She's not doing any feints. He's not trying to, to, to definitely take Nicole off her game. You're going to have to do that. And, and, and that movement, it's great, but it's not doing anything. You're not throwing off Aguirre. That was maybe a good idea to maybe commit to a double leg. Whether it works or not, just let your opponent know it's in the back pocket. Sure, you could try to feign it and go down. That that back leg of Aguirre is there. Oh, good oh. left hand. And that's it. A quick stoppage. I was pretty fast. Let's I take thought a look that at was that. a yeah. little fast. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, it I want to see. It looked like Mayer was reaching for the leg. I have to get a replay of that. Yeah, I want to Mayor see that. Mayor telling the referee is she's disappointed in that stoppage. I mean, she was clearly outclassed. Sure, but fight, maybe but just a little second or two. Let's take a second, look. Right there we go. All right, the action here. The left hook that the kick started it was it blocked. No. Left hook, okay. right to the jaw. She, she was. She had a little right. Looks like she had enough defense to keep the fight going. I thought it was an early stoppage by the referee, but a fight that certainly was going the way of Nicola. I get it. Yeah. I don't think that that extra second or two would have made a difference. Well, whatever we think about it, it is a TKO win for Nicole Aguirre in dominant performance. She moves to two and zero. Oh, we'll make it official right after this. It was dominance from the outset for Nicole Aguirre. Great kickboxing, but it was a great left hook that led to the end. Beatrice Callas will make it official. El tiempo oficial. Un minuto y cincuenta y ocho segundos del round número dos, the official time. One minute and fifty-eight seconds of round number two. And the winner, by technical knockout, la ganadora, por knockout técnico. Nicole Aguirre! Nicole Aguirre, 2-0. And, oh, and from what I saw tonight, Rodolfo, sky's the limit for this young lady. Wow, for precise. What, what was really captivating me from this young lady is the way that she made that fight look so smooth. Didn't show any nerves, nothing at all came to fight pick and choose, you're right, you're just like you said, it made it look like a sparring match. But that's just, it, it's no, nothing to take away from Mayer, it's just that's how good Aguirre is. And look at her here, textbook technique right here, picking and choosing where she wants to strike. She knew exactly where to hit. Of course, Mayer trying to, to play that footwork from the left to the right, but just wasn't effective at all. The teeps were on point, the kicks, I was really thinking that that kick it was going to be the key. Oh, we're going to add another highlight reel to the uh, to the bank already that we have, but it was not it. It left, was the shot. Left hook ain't a bad highlight either. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. Great clinch work from Aguirre. Try to go for the stiff punch. 
There is a call there. Was it an early stoppage? Ah, well, the point is, I don't think we were going to see much from Mayer from this position. She was rightfully just pretty much out the way. Nicola Geary picking up another stoppage victory inside La Hala. And like you said, Jimmy, the sky is the limit for this young lady. A fighter who sees the whole body, not the head, not the body, not the legs, but head to the toes. Everything's a target for Nicole Aguirre. She has the range, she has the power. Also, by the way, a jiu-jitsu black belt, which we haven't seen. And there is our featured bout of the evening, Cruz Garcia versus Jose Ignacio later on tonight. That is going to be an absolute war. They were friendly at the weigh-in. They're friendly tonight. Don't let that fool you. These are experienced fighters ready to make their name at La Jaula. But coming up, they call him Bagel. Anthony Jagel, standout wrestler in Hawaii. Will it translate to success in La Jaula? Let's hear from him. I was probably one of them, uh, them kids. I was just always doing dumb stuff, like always fighting each other. But as I got older, you know, I started getting more disciplined. I love the sport so much because it just took me what I need from here to where I'm at now and yeah, come back to Global. This is my professional debut. I'm very excited. I'm always nervous before every fight. I don't care who you are, but what you do is you just use that as fuel and go out there and compete and show, show who you are. I just feel like I'm going to be in his face all night. My job is, is to commit to my game plan, take him to the ground, piece him up with any way given possible way to get the win. I'm here, I'm that guy, and um, you know, just have fun with it. Hey Henry, no, nothing personal, just business. I get my hand raised, start my legacy, feel, build my foundation as a fighter, and uh, good luck to you. Entrando a la jaula, Anthony Jago. Nickname is Bagel for <laughs> obvious reasons. It just rhymes so well. If you can't tell from the build, he is a wrestler. That is his base. That's what he feels he is great at. Everybody had to say it. Take him down, piece him up. All right. Ohio State Placer. Ohio, of course, having a fantastic history of wrestling. Shout out to David Taylor, world champion, four-time Ohio State champion. The number of great wrestlers out of Ohio. I can fill a small encyclopedia, right? That was his training ground. That's what made him great. And that's what he says carried him through the amateurs where he is undefeated. A fan of Demetrius Johnson, Volkanovski, George St. Pierre, the technicians who use their top game. And that is the strong base of the DJ, as you mentioned, for that wrestling skill. And this guy picked up a couple of championships as an amateur. Powerful ground and pound, man. So if, if he gets you down to the ground, positions well his weight so he can lay you really close to La Hala or the cage where he fought previously and just lay the ground and pound. That's going to be the strategy here. Now, although his base is wrestling, he said, I've been feeling a little bit confident with all of my other arsenal. So look up maybe for some elbows that he may throw in, he said. And he's facing another wrestler. Let's find out about him. I fell in love with this sport through all the years of hard work, sacrifice, everything, blood, sweat, tears. You know, I love it because it means so much to me. I've been doing it for such a long time and we got to reach the top. I fight for my family to provide for them and as well for myself. I just want to show the world that I'm here to, you know, put on the show all the time. I believe, you know, my height's gonna help me a lot in the fight just because I can be able to, you know, push, kick him, keep him off me as much as I can. Put on a clinic with the striking. I would love it to be a first round finish again, you know, maybe with something flying, something crazy for the crowd. You know, I know that they're expecting that, but at the end of the day, I'm just gonna go out there and fight my heart out and put on a good damn show. Anthony, I hope you come out in your best performance and let's put on a good fight and show for the crowd. Henry Beltran. There is Henry Beltran, a wrestler as well. That's how he came up, that's how he cut his teeth. Won two amateur titles, one in Mexicali, one in San Diego. This guy, you know, when he saw them 
at the weigh-ins, can't believe they're the same weight class. He is so much <laughs> taller than his opponent. He thinks that's the key to victory tonight. He says that's going to be the key here for him to, vict to the victory. And the last time we saw him was that beautiful kick KO, Jimmy. And I think, don't be surprised that we see a replay of that here tonight. He wants to definitely put a nice highlight for this victory, making the 2-0 inside La Hala, as you said, picked up some championships as an amateur. But out of the two, I would say that Beltran is that well-rounded fighter. He's pretty good all around, whether it be on the ground and his striking. And his strike, very elusive, man. Great range. Quick, fast, and strategic. Doesn't waste any shots. Well, we'll see who's more efficient, who has the more well-rounded game. That is the question. Welcome back to Combate Global. About to get underway on your left, it is Anthony Jagel. On your right, Henry Beltran. Beltran 1-0, Jagel making his pro debut. Both have wrestling backgrounds. Jagel a bit more decorated. See the head-to-head, -head. same age, the height. Jagel, four foot nine. That is not a typo. He does not break five feet, a massive reach advantage for Henry Beltran. Can he use it? Beltran versus Jago. Beatrice, get us started. Continuamos con mucha más acción. Este es el evento estelar de esta noche. We continue with much more action. This is the main event of the evening. División Peso Mosca, Flyweight Division. Los jueces son de judges are James Lazaro, Mark Strayson, and Richard Green Jr. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. In the blue corner, en la esquina azul, wearing white, vestido de blanco, su peso oficial, 123.8 libras, his official weight, 123.8 pounds tonight. He enters the jaula to make his professional debut esta noche. Hace su debut profesional. From Middletown, Ohio, Anthony De Bago Jago. Introduced in the red corner, in the esquina roja, wearing black, vestido de negro, su peso oficial, 125 libras, his official weight, 125 pounds tonight. He enters La Jaula undefeated as a pro with one victory esta noche. Entra La Jaula invicto como profesional con una victoria. From El Centro, California, Henry the Hitman Beltran. El referee, Ramón Ramos. Henry. We are ready to get underway. Anthony Jagel in the white, Henry Beltran in the black. Yeah, four foot nine wrestler. I've seen some of these guys that are short, they're wrestlers, and uh, their biggest arsenal here is that right hand, of course, from the wrestling. That look out for that. As for Beltran, look out for those kicks. I've seen in some of this uh, competition as an amateur uh, throughout the fight, you'll see that Jago will. Put those hands down. This is not typical, right? Yeah. The wrestler transitions from wrestling to MMA. What a great way of uh, that's that wrestling defense, right? He has said that wrestling IQ, Jimmy. Yeah, no real level change. They teach you from right Jago. from the start. He's already there, and that was a good sprawl from Beltran. Oh, they make you sprawl over and over and over again. It's like a, it's as easy as, a, as learning how to walk, right? You just bad memories. Yep. Hit your opponent yep. with your hips. Make them never <laughs> want to shoot on you again. Uh uh. Antonio McKee, great wrestler out of Southern California. Went, went to my high school. He said, you hit him so hard, they don't want to double leg you again. Right. Hit him with the hips. Right. Man, he's so fast. Yeah, very, very quick all the way inside. This is where the shorter man's going to have a little bit of an advantage on the inside. Doesn't want to play the outside game right here in the center of La Jaula. That's Beltran's territory. And if he's face, if Beltran is facing a very quick wrestler, that could throw him off edge here. Nice right hand. 
He talked about flashiness. You heard it. He said, oh, maybe I do something. Oh! Talk about flashiness. Wow. Oh. Beltran trying to get back in the fight. This could be dangerous. Beautiful oh, shot Beltran. from the wrestler from Ohio. And guess what? He's a mixed martial artist ready to go. Beltran trying to get him off. He's trying said to push it. away that weight. No false advertising. They say you're going to see some new stuff from me. Here's Corner say, take his back, take his back. There's there one hook in. Beltran trying to scramble out of this position, but. Oh, when you have Jago. a wrestler that level, Jimmy, it's really yeah. hard to get him off your back. It's hard to outscramble them, right. right? You're not going to win that kind of battle. No. Quick guard pull, roll for a leg, something like that, maybe. Beltran is bleeding. Not sure from where. Not surprising at all. He's taking some <laughs> damage in the last few seconds. Not even halfway through round number one. Oh, there's that reader can choke the right now. He has that tight. tight, Jimmy. He has that tight. This might be it. Beltran's fighting it hard, if but he ain't tapping, will he's not be denied. And that's it. Wow. What a performance Ooh. from Anthony Jagel. It has just hit him. Bienvenidos. Yeah, he won his pro debut in dominant fashion. Talked about the striking of Beltran. And it was a beautiful shot from Anthony Jagel that turned this one around. The young man overcome with emotion. In La Jaula, he earned it. Wow. A lot of confidence in his hands. Rapid. That young man deserves very emotional. No. But boy, did he deserve that victory the way he did it right here, just wrapping his legs around, using that hollow to the position, finding the right place to land in there, rear naked choke. And once he sunk in that left arm, he knew he had this one on for a victory. There's the tap. He saw it with the left hand. Motions hitting Anthony Jagel. All the work he wow. went through to get here pays off. The first round submission. And we will make it official when we come back. Anthony Jagel picking up his first pro victory. Welcome back into La Jaula. The emotions of your first win. You never get it again. Enjoy it, Anthony Jagel. El tiempo oficial, dos minutos y 31 segundos de round número uno, the official time. Two minutes and 31 seconds of round number one. And the winner, by way of submission, el ganador, por su misión, Anthony Jago! New record 1-0, officially undefeated in his professional career. Talked all day about his wrestling credentials. Standout wrestler in Ohio. It was his power that was the difference tonight. When we come back, we'll break down how it happened, the adjustments he made. When we come back, Combate Global. Welcome back inside Univision Studios. It has been a night of incredible action, which has come to be the norm here at Combate Global. Jimmy Smith alongside Rodolfo Roman. What we just saw, of course, Anthony Jagel finishing Henry Beltran seconds into round number one. Now, what I'm wondering about is how much of a theme this is going to be, how much theme it would be tonight, because you look on paper and you go, man, wrestler, Gonna use the takedown, gonna use his ground game. He said in the interview, take him down, piece him up, that's what I'm gonna do. What happens? Left hook finishes him on the ground, but it started out on the feet. Now, when you're dealing with fighters just starting their pro debut, throw away the paper, right? They don't fight on paper, they fight in real life. You get surprises like this. Wow, this is just effective from this young man, Jago, coming in. He's so fast, so quick. Look at that. I think mean, kudos to Bertrand for sprawling in there. He didn't go ahead and take down, but that left hand that he had, it took out Beltran right down, and one is in position, and the beautiful thing about it is the way 
that Botran landed using La Hala to his advantage right next to the corner, following every direction he had to do, sinking in that body lock to land in that rear naked choke. Jimmy, this, this guy is, is, is something to look out for as he starts evolving as a professional. This is only his first professional debut. You know what's crazy to, to look at, Jimmy? This guy transitioned to MMA just yeah. three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Not even. Yeah. Three, two and change, right? Oh, almost three years ago. Unbelievable the level of training, the level of sparring, the level of athleticism a fighter comes in with now in their their, their pro MMA debut, but also he is four foot nine. Yeah. His opponent tonight in the howler, Henry Beltran, was five foot four and towered over him. Now, you could say, well, that's a disadvantage. Also, right. how many four foot nine guys is he in the gym? How many of those guys? It throws you off a little bit, right? Not that much. build, which may seem like a disadvantage, might throw off an opponent who's not used to it. Timing range, totally different. I, I could think of one guy, uh, Gustavo Ballard, who's about the yeah. same height, right? And uh, until he met his top opponent that KO'd him, but it's very hard to find a guy like that with that height. So we'll see if that carries him to more professional success. You want to see his success? You want to see these fighters live and in person? This is how you do it. Welcome back to Combate Global. When you talk about a pro debut, that talk about the amateur background doesn't get a whole lot better than Cruz Garcia. Fíjate que siempre fui muy peleonero, ¿sabes? Me fui calmando cuando conocí el deporte. Empecé con karate, pero duré muy poco. Luego, luego vi videos de MMA, me gustó mucho, me metí. A los 14, 15 tuve mi primer competencia y en México hemos ganado todo. Grappling, boxeo, kickboxing, MMA. Mi hermana también pelea. Mi hermana hace poquito quedó bronce en el mundial y mi mamá llorando, o sea, no podía ver la pelea. A mí nunca me ha visto pelear. Supongo que esta vez sí la va a ver porque toda mi familia quiere ver la pelea. Es la persona quien me motiva. Mucha gente me dice que si estoy nervioso y la verdad no. Me siento muy bien, muy feliz. Me gusta controlar el centro de la jaula. Me siento muy bien técnicamente. Y lo van a ver. Pepillo, nos vemos hoy en la noche. This is where you start feeling the nerves in the tunnel, waiting for the walk. How does Jose Ignacio Brutus Gomez control him? Let's hear from him. Fui a un gimnasio allá en Costa Rica, en donde empecé con boxeo. Tenía un profesor, él fue el que me empezó a decir que llegara a las clases de MMA. Y empecé a hacer casi que todo al mismo tiempo. Prácticamente así empezó como ese camino. Siempre quise tener como la confianza de poder enfrentarme a alguien más en esta situación y es algo que siempre me ha llamado la atención. Me encanta el hecho de que es una guerra principalmente psicológica. Siempre me va a dar como un hecho, otro nivel y eso es lo que más me gusta. Bueno, este va a ser mi debut profesional. Me siento listo. Nosotros pensamos que el trabajo es la base de la confianza y el trabajo está ahí. Espero que te hayas preparado bien. Nos vemos en la jaula. Ahí es donde yo hablo. It is our final fight of the night, a fight that has been full of action. Beatrice Callas, get him in the howler. Entrando a la jaula, Cruz Garcia. We'll give you some numbers for Cruz Garcia. 15 and three as an amateur. For reference, you have usually under 10 amateur fights before you make your pro debut. This guy had 18, 5 0 as an amateur boxer, 4 0 as a kickboxer. Unbelievable record across a lot of combat sports. That's why he's coming in here tonight, making his debut in the Howla with so much confidence. I don't know about you, Jimmy, but those numbers sound right for me to play the lotto. <laughs> That's very <laughs> effective numbers, I'll tell you that much, but this kid does come with a lot of hype. He's had a lot of experience in the amateur se uh, area, and yeah. he comes in with that well-roundedness. But putting it together as a pro, right? That's where that's where the key is. He trains with the the Danto MMA. Comes from a family of fighting. His sister also competes and says that she is actually a motivation for him. 
And what, what really caught my attention is they asked him during fight week interviews, are you nervous? Because not really, man. I've, I've done so many fights. Yeah. It just feels like another day in the office. Also, Rodolfo, if you won the lottery, you'd yeah. still come to this job, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, I'll be here. Of course you Nobody would. Nobody will know. I mean, I, I wouldn't. I'm not gonna, you think I'm going to show up for the picture, the photo up? The big check? Heck no, you no. won't see me. Uh -uh. No. That's what I'm talking about. That's, that's my guy right there. All right, Cruz Garcia <laughs> confidently making his entrance in the aula. Young, full of enthusiasm. Ready to get his pro debut underway. All smiles at the way in Nothing but respect for his opponent. Doesn't mean he's showing any mercy. Very, very aggressive. Good stand-up. Big fan of Conor McGregor. Wants a similar career, similar money. Su oponente, Jose Ignacio Gomez. Jose Ignacio Gomez fighting out of San Jose, Costa Rica. Was a soccer player in his youth. He fell, broke his arm. Said it made him question. He wanted to keep doing it. He's a successful soccer player, but wanted to dedicate his life to fighting. Only 24 years old, but been training about six years. A fan of the pound for pound greats. Alexander Volkanovsky, John Jones. Wants a similar kind of career and a similar performance, certainly tonight in Combate Global. A very powerful dude. You can tell right, right there, Jack from his body. Uh, texture, uh, a purple belt in Jiu Jitsu, great striking. If you get really close though, he'll go ahead and grab you, slam you straight down to the ground. Trains with the athletic advance with the likes of Jorge Calvo, a man who has made a name for himself outside of Costa Rica, who's won some championships, including here uh, overseas. And, and I have to tell you, with a trained guy like that that has made a name for himself in Costa Rica and MMA, you're definitely coming in here well prepared for your debut in La Jaula. And both gentlemen looking very, very relaxed. Cruz Garcia on your right. Jose Ignacio Gomez on your right. Both guys ready to go. Coming up next, don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Combate Global. Two intense fighters ready to make their professional debut. Cruz Garcia, Jose Ignacio Gomez. Both guys well prepared. Cruz Garcia, great amateur. MMA, kickboxing, boxing. Jose Ignacio though, built like a freight train, successful amateur career in Costa Rica. Can't wait to get it started. Cruz has uh, Cruz Garcia has a height advantage and reach. Will it translate? And the howler, Beatrice, get him going. Continuamos con mucha más acción este duelo. En la división peso ligero, we continue with much more action this bout. In the lightweight division, los jueces son the judges are Lorenzo Toledo, James Lazaro, and Mark Strayson. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. En la esquina azul, in the blue corner, wearing white, vestido de blanco, su peso oficial, 158.2 libras, is official weight, 158.2 pounds. Esta noche, entra la jaula a hacer su debut profesional tonight. He enters la jaula to make his professional debut. De sangre mexicana, León, Guanajuato, México. Cruz, el doble G, García. Introducing the red corner in the esquina roja, wearing red, vestido de rojo, su peso oficial, 155 libras, official weight, 155 pounds. Tonight, he enters La Jaula to make his professional debut esta noche. Hace su debut profesional. De San Jose, Costa Rica, Jose Ignacio Brutus Gómez. El referee, Alan Aveles. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. I gave you the instructions in the locker room. If you want to touch them up, go ahead. Come out, fight. 
It is Cruz Garcia in the white trunks versus Jose Ignacio Gomez in the red. Who's the to begin round number one. Who's the taller, the taller fighter? Yeah. Gomez already starting with that strike. Ooh, has a powerful right hand. Jesus. Gomez leaning into the right hand. Yeah, Gomez is in the tank. Trying to negate that reach advantage. How do you do that? You get inside and you get about short, powerful punches. Well, Garcia does have that experience. So many bouts in combat sports. Prepares oh, left hand. Garcia one. certainly not, um, uh, Gomez, I'm sorry, certainly not fighting intimidated. Not whatsoever. Garcia, 15 and three as an amateur in MMA. Five and 0 as an amateur boxer. Kind of with that left. Oh, oh, another good left hand. Oh, Gomez may be in trouble, Garcia Jimmy. Garcia looking to end this one early, but he is firing back. Ooh. Gomez showing that he still has power. Now these boys are feeling it. I don't see oh, this one going footing. much longer. I think he lost his footing there, Jimmy. Garcia right now all over Jose Ignacio Gomez. Forced to work from guard. Now Garcia calling him out. Yeah, a little bit of trickery <laughs> there. Saying, hey, get up, and then doesn't let him up. All right, Gomez might definitely be in trouble here. It'll be really hard from this position. He's feeling that pressure. Alan right. Labellas might step in, Jimmy. And all these referees tell him to watch the back of the head. He's asking him to defend himself intelligently. If not, he'll call it. And Gomez trying to roll forward. You see, every time he does, yeah. Garcia able to stop that momentum. Garcia knows he has his prey where he wants him. Now he may be even going for a rear naked choke. Trying to take the back here. No hooks in yet. None whatsoever. Yeah, but they are not necessary. You get the choke. Hooks don't matter. He's trying to wrap that one hook. And right now, Gomez has to turn to his left hard. So far, it doesn't look like he has the knowledge to do that. So far, overwhelmed by Cruz Garcia. Yeah, Every Gomez. bit the prospect that we thought he was. Yeah, Gomez can't, can't show. Also looking to set up maybe an arm triangle if he can get him flat. Yeah, like Cruz setting up, lose the wrist. Not even halfway through round number now one. He has body, body triangle. Lock, there he has it. Now Gomez in a ton of trouble trying to survive against La Jaula. If there's any good news, it might be that this time on the ground has allowed him to clear his head a little bit. He was rocked by those strikes. Garcia very charismatic in there. He seems to be <laughs> all the knowing that he has this bout in his pocket. He's talking like he's got it locked up. Yeah. Gomez now trying to defend the choke. The fighter in the red from yeah. San Jose, Costa Rica. The Mexican right now has his back, body triangle in, hunting for the rear naked choke. Two minutes left to go, which is a ton of time in of round time. number one. Gomez was looking at that clock to see how much time he has left to see if he can survive to go to the second. Yeah, but if you're Gomez, though, you don't want to roll to your stomach. No. The worst thing you could do is get flattened out. Like, you can defend okay in this position. Sucks, probably going to lose the round, but sure. you go belly down, this is over. Question is, does he have the knowledge on the ground to be able to do that. Fighting the body triangle is not a not cakewalk under no, the, the best of circumstances. Oh. oh, did a rookie mistake, reach for his legs. His opponent uh. now transitioning to the mount. Can Gomez get his guard back? He does. But that open guard is just allowing, you know, Garcia to, to, to posture up and land punches whenever he wants. Go and guard, go tight, go close, keep your opponent close to you. For, for Gomez, this yeah. right now is just a matter of weighing in, making it to the second round. And this round so far been a wipeout for Cruz Garcia. Jose Ignacio Gomez, his pro debut, finds himself exactly where he doesn't want to be, which is behind early. One minute left to go in round number one. Kind of surprised we're seeing the end of this one. Well, you know, the, arms, talking. the arms are there, Jimmy. Gomez yeah. did not grab any of it. On some ground inexperience in De La Hiva guard position. Hard to use, oh, oh, okay. Stepping up to kick, showing he's still game. But you have a choice, either push your opponent away or keep him close, and right now he's in the middle. Now watch the leg. High ground and pound from Cruz Garcia into the Z guard for Jose Ignacio Gomez. Positions, once again, hard to use, you know, in regular jiu-jitsu it's tough, let alone in MMA if somebody's punching you in the face. Z-guard, not easy to use. 
Ten seconds left in round number one, a round dominated by Cruz Garcia. But if there's a bright, if there's a light at the end of the tunnel, it's that Jose Ignacio Gomez was able to see the end of round number one. Yeah, I saw towards the middle of that round, he looked at the clock, because right after it was all ground to see if he would live to see another opportunity for Cruz Garcia, man. Let's take a listen here during the eight rounds. All right, calm yourself down, take a break, deep breath. All right, we already have him on the floor. Control him, control him. If not, lower down the hips. Push the hand and start hitting him from this angle. Let's go for the takedown. You see that he wants to throw the, the one and he wants to KO you. Yeah, and that's pretty much what he had, Jimmy. It was just that one shot that he tried to KO Garcia. All the way. But you can see Garcia. The <laughs> see the mental game of Garcia, right? <laughs> I am ready to go. Like he's go. been here before. Yep. Jose Ignacio what? Gomez in the red. He's on the wrong side of that first round. Yeah, Ooh, Gomez, yep. Gomez needs to keep him away, trying to use that jab. Oh, push speaking him off. of power, Gomez throwing a big left hook, big right hand over the top of it. Now he's going for the takedown. He gets it. Now let's see what, what he does with it. Yeah, what can mean also with the guard of Cruz Garcia. He is a decorated grappler in his home country of Mexico. Got to be able to use everything, but what can Jose Ignacio Gomez do on top? Garcia right now, opening and closing that guard. Good short ground and pound from Gomez, but I like that. Flip the script. Do something a little different. Throw him Go off. In, yep. Get, get on top. See what you can do with your ground and pound. It's always great when you see fighters like that, when you anticipate one thing and you get the other. You know, it just throws you off and it makes you adjust right on the spot. Short shots to the ribs. Jose Ignacio Gomez wisely not trying to do too much with the ground and pound. Staying cautious. He took a beating in round number one. What I'm liking is yeah. Gomez using, and here go the open scoring, rightfully so, going to Garcia, Jimmy. Not surprised. One judge saw 10-8. Totally could sure. be a 10-8 round. It was dominant, and there were a couple times I thought that was going to get stopped. That's what I look for in a 10-8 round, but two judges saw it 10-9, which means... A decision still possible for Jose Ignacio Gomez. Keep that in mind. Yeah, what I'm liking from Gomez is here, playing a right card, went for the takedown, totally took off Garcia off his game. Yep. And it's been all pounding elbows, hammer fists from Short Gomez. Shots. Yep. Short little shots. But he needs to keep pulling him towards the hala. That was, was very helping him out, pinning him there. Of course, Cruz Garcia has been talking throughout this. I'm sure he's going to be asking the referee for a stand-up. And unfortunately, that makes the referee keep it down there longer. <laughs> I don't know if you don't know. have been around the pro game a long time. Referees don't like being told what to do. Thinking guillotine is Cruz Garcia. Jose Ignacio Gomez, yeah, good job defending yeah, good and job. keeping that head centered. Yeah, good job of keeping, yeah. keeping him there. All you need in a fight like this, where you've been wiped out in round number one, is a path to victory. That's it. Right now, Gomez is saying, wait, if I keep this guy grounded, maybe I land can... Land some shots. You know, land some shots, get this guy frustrated, and either take him out or bank two rounds like this. So right now, Gomez is saying, okay, there's a way to win. He found the loophole, Jimmy. Found the loophole, <laughs> found the way in, and we are past the halfway point of round number one, and, you know, Gomez staying busy. May not Referee be pretty, but it's working. Yeah. You know, it's, it's that team that gives up, you know, 14 points in the first quarter. They start running the ball, start having some, okay, all right, maybe we can get this one back. That's the mentality. Once again, just like you said, ain't pretty, nope. ain't beautiful. But Round they, number one was pretty for Cruz Garcia, but hey, if you have to win ugly, you win ugly, but so far good stuff in round number two from Jose Ignacio Gomez. Great adjustment from his end. He saw the flaw, he capitalized on it to keep his body on him, man those short punches, and just ride it through. But on the other side, Cruz Garcia not showing a lot of frustration. He's just trying to work his game, trying to advance his guard, trying to control the wrists. 
rule of thumb is wrist control equals triangle, elbow control equals armbar. Yeah, they can guillotine, yeah. So far, Cruz Garcia not overwhelmed on the bottom, not giving up anything big, but tick tock, tick tock. Round number two running out. So Jose far, Ignacio Gomez doing good work. Yeah, but this round definitely going to Gomez. What we've seen so far. One thing about Gomez so far with the, with the hit pressure he's bringing, he's not allowing Cruz Garcia right. to scramble. It, it's great it, weight distribution. Good yeah, yeah, great good weight distribution. distribution. What do they say? Pressure to pass, pressure to submit, everything. Old school jujitsu, old man jujitsu. So I'll just ride it through. <laughs> and Garcia keeping him close, but no real offense. I mean, um, briefly thinking about the guillotine, but Jose Ignacio Gomez hasn't had to defend a lot of submissions. For Garcia, you know, coming into the third round, he has to look out for that takedown. Must be very frustrating. In that first round, he was all, hey, look at me, and then all of a sudden, shut down. Welcome to the pro game, Cruz Garcia, where <laughs> fighters do not give up, they keep going. All right, bad round number one. Doesn't mean you mentally fall apart. You keep working, and to his credit, that's what Jose Ignacio Gomez has done in this round number two. And I think he's fought his wow. way right back into this fight. Flip the script in this one, Jimmy. Yeah, that's what we call it mixed martial arts. A lot of ways to win. Let's take a listen in here. All right, breathe. All right, going in from, right from the start of that second round for the takedown, and that was pretty much the entire second round. Looking for that right hand. Go for the takedown, he has no response to it. Did you understand? Yep. Keep the hands up, keep moving. That's Let's take it down again. All right, don't even faint. So that's that's the trick, Jimmy. Stick to the game plan. If it worked in the second, it may work as well in third. And it's true, Cruz Garcia didn't really have any answer for that takedown. Simple single leg right to his butt. He's gonna have to faint though, because Garcia is definitely expecting it again. Yeah. Now he's aware of what his opponent's gonna do. Will he set it up with the strikes? Jose Ignacio Gomez in the red, taking on Cruz Garcia in the white. Cruz Garcia cruising in round number one. Almost got the stoppage, got one 10 8 round, according to one judge. But round number two, Jose Ignacio Gomez, takedown, ground and pound. Able to stay on top and win that second round. We haven't seen the scorecards yet, but can't imagine any other outcome. Question mark kick right over the top of the head. We're seeing that. You know, that, that, that offensive capability we saw in round number one from Cruz Garcia. He's just waiting for the right moment. When will the takedown come of Jose Ignacio Gomez? That's the question. That would definitely make the difference here in this third round as we go to the open scoring, Jimmy. Right, no tied. Surprise, two judges scorecard. It is tied, 19-19. The winner of this round wins the fight. Period, end of sentence. Who wants it more? That's the question. That's what it comes down to. With less than four minutes to go. If Cruz Garcia thought he was going to, you know, pun intended, cruise his way to victory, <laughs> that did not happen. No. Right? After a great round number one. He met an iceberg, Jimmy. Yeah, he suddenly realized he had a fight on his hands. Now getting back to the basics, are, are you surprised, Rodolfo, that, that Gomez hasn't gone in for the takedown yet? I, I'm a bit surprised. Uh, yes and no. Sometimes you got to keep him in suspense, right? Oh, sometimes you gotta make it interesting. Right? Yeah, you, you can't give it a weed. <laughs> Guys don't kiss on the first date, Jimmy. Oh, good left hand. <laughs> Maybe you're just not doing it right. It's possible you're to kissing the first oh, date. No fun, play. man. Come on. <laughs> oh, we're from different backgrounds. Let me put it that way. Ignacio <laughs> Gomez, though, under attack from Cruz Garcia. I do a lot on the first date. Now Gomez. <laughs> TMI, Jimmy. In, in TMI. the red. Let's get back to the fight. Let's get back to the fight. <laughs> Jose Ignacio Gomez. But, but to your point, maybe baiting Garcia. Oh, oh, look at that kick. And that was the cost that of was it, Jimmy. And, and that's oh, it. Add that one to the highlight reel back. Beautiful stuff from Cruz Garcia. He is fighting.
fired up. Just when we thought maybe Ignacio was baiting him in, gonna set up the takedown, waited a bit too, too long. Much. Yes. Waited too much. We talked waited about setup. We talked about the idea that, that Gomez might use that power to set up the takedown. There was no takedown there. Woo, we'll get, make it official when we come back. Welcome inside La Hala. It was an amazing fight. Cruz Garcia, Jose Ignacio Gomez. Brutal knockout. Let's make it official. Go, Beatrice. El tiempo oficial. Dos minutos y ocho segundos de round número tres, the official time. Two minutes and eight seconds of round number three. And the winner, by technical knockout, el ganador, por knockout técnico, desde México, Cruz Garcia. It's all about adjustments. Now 1-0 and oh as a pro, had, had an outstanding round number one. But Jose Ignacio Gomez made it interesting in round number two, but round number three, back to the well. Goes Cruz Garcia, dominant with the striking throughout, but it was the idea that, that for some reason, Jose Ignacio Gomez didn't go for the takedown in round number three. We discussed it in the break, a, a bit surprising, yes? Waited too long, it was just two minutes in there. The opportunities were there. He took the shots, take the shot, go for the takedown. He hesitated. And then rightfully so, Garcia read it and landed that kick that pretty much put an end to this fight. But if it worked in the second round, his corner told him, it's yours, keep it just straight from the, the top. Take him down to the ground, he's yours, he's not gonna do anything, he has nothing. Waited too long, that is a rookie mistake, Jimmy. And they're just starting their pro careers when you see the talent of Cruz Garcia. Well-roundedness, needs a little work on his takedown defense, maybe his activity from guard, but his stand-up looks sharp tonight. Look at that kick. Beautiful head kick, and the left hand on the ground, right to the jaw. There is the finish, the fighter from Mexico. Outstanding amateur career, not just in MMA, but in boxing, kickboxing. It translated into a pro win tonight, 1-0 and oh as a pro, and you know, it's, it's the ability to deal with adversity. A lot of fighters, easy first round, thought you had it, and round number two kind of got away from him, but he didn't mentally break. He kind of went back to the well, went back to what he was great at, and got the knockout. Shows his ability to kind of kind of ride the waves that are just part of being a fighter in mixed martial arts. Yeah, yeah they didn't show much frustration whatsoever. He kept it going, listened to his corner, kept it cool, cool, cool calm, and collective. And the guy has a long resume in amateur, in combat sport, just showed here tonight. Let's work a little bit on the ground game. I'm sure the next time around, we'll see some new weapons from this young man. Uh, here's the thing. It ended so strong tonight, but guess what? We had that throughout the night from the beginning. Our first fight of the night, of course, delivered outstanding finishes. That's what we got. It was Alfredo Garcia, Chris Quiros. Incredible fight. Alfredo Garcia coming in, draped in the Cuban and American flags. His opponent, Chris Quiros from Tucson, Arizona. He was calm, he was collected. He was ice cold throughout this fight, was he not? All right, effective. Using the stand-up game, that basis wrestling, but he said, I'm really confident with my hands. And he threw this wonderful shot that put an end to his opponent, Garcia, straight down, down the pipe. And obviously the work on the ground with that solid wrestling, just slamming Garcia straight to the ground. Right there, shots. There was no response from Garcia whatsoever. Leaving referee Alan Abelis to step in and call the fights. Sweet victory for this young man from Arizona. Feeling proudly. Great ground work there from the bottom, Jimmy. Phenomenal work for this young dude, which returned to La Howl the last time he competed there was as an amateur. Now, <laughs> when I think about Chris Kiros, when I talk about the, the the success he had on the ground. As soon as he had his opponent in bad position, he was able to seal it up, uh, both hooks in, flatten him out. And then when he was talking to you, you interviewed him yeah. out for after Rodolfo. 
He acted like he could have fought another six rounds. Didn't expend the didn't energy. Didn't even crack a sweat. Didn't even crack a sweat. <laughs> it, it, almost, it almost makes you feel bad. They're so good. His gas was excellent. Was that part of it to you? He controlled his nerves so well. You would have known that this, you would have never known this guy's making his debut. Very calm, very cool. Like another day in the office. And when you have that type of mentality, it, you know, once you get there, Jimmy, in your first fight, if you overcome that, you already won the battle. You know, because the first opponent you face is yourself going in there. So he definitely captivated that to get that victory inside La Hala for the first time as a pro. And we also have the flyweights, 125 pounds. It was Pablo Ramos versus Royce. Too smooth Butler. Chile versus the Central. would have let go but this is the situation we were talking about Jimmy in the ground game there weren't some mistakes in there that he has to go back to the drawing board and see where he can improve now he found his path to victory on top able to scramble a bit able to get inside and throw some power punches but how much of that was a theme tonight where the fighters just getting started remember they're making their pro debuts they go oh Here's how I can win, and they stick to it. See, Mike Butler found the way to win in round number two, and that's what carried him to victory. Those last 10 minutes, those adjustments, how important was that tonight? Yeah, he adjusted. He was one of the guys that adjusted and benefited from him. Not what we just saw with Gomez, where it worked for him in the second round, and he failed to do it in the third round what was working for him so that is key as a fighter adjusting when you're in trouble and it could be right within that same round right if you're quickly thinking real fast what to do what that's going to work for you you got to do it flip the script now you and i were discussing this after the fight we're talking about adjustments what needs to be done when looking at the performance of royce butler 125 they go and go and go and the punch count the kick count is so incredibly high does he need to maybe uh, increase that improve that in order to be a factor in the howler that's what I'm saying. you got to let go. He was a big conservative. He even said, I kind of held back in there. Look, I'm learning. I, I, I'm new as a pro here. I'm learning new things. So if he let the hands go, more of the kicks, because there were some calf kicks that were being thrown from both men, then that kind of slowed down. So let them go. Speaking of letting it go, that's exactly <laughs> what we saw between two wrestlers. Man. Thought this would be a ground battle. It was not. Anthony Jago taking on Henry Beltran, dropped him with a big left hand, and then the scrapper, four foot nine, was all over Henry Beltran. There's a rear naked choke finish. Surprised at the explosiveness, surprised at the power. Were you, Adolfo? When you see an experienced wrestler, a man who had a, a resume as a wrestler in Ohio, he's explosive, he's efficient, the energy is there all day, but what really surprised me is his confidence in his striking. He transitioned just three years ago from being a wrestler to an MMA fighter. It shows to you how good this guy could be. It feels so good to take that amateur background and be great as a pro. That's what happened tonight. You'll see more of it after this. Welcome back to Combate Global. Jimmy Smith alongside Rodolfo Roman. Look, we're working toward 
Copa Combate Global, the playoffs, as we say, and Combate Global, it's coming up. It's coming up soon. It's gigantic. It's f***ing ginormous. We're giving away this trophy because this is beyond awesome. Copa Combate, $100,000, eight countries, one night you will never forget. you got to watch. Unbelievable. Over the top. Hola, hola, ¿cómo les va? Muy buenas noches, un placer saludarlos. En esta noche, acá en Fresno, California, ¿qué fue lo que pasó? Villaseca, el chileno, se pasó a ser primer semifinalista. Muy bueno, avanzaba a estas semifinales de la Copa Combate desde Fresno, California, segunda edición de la Bruno. Copa Combate. Bruno Canetti que le gana a Ruquet, Ruquet que entraba en reemplazo de Gastón Reino que tuvo una lesión y gana de esta manera contundente, sobre todo importante administrar el cuerpo. Y ahora también el mexicano Alejandro Flores que fue el que pasó también en la ronda de semifinales, venciendo a John Bedoya también de manera espectacular. La forma en la que Bedoya decía ya, no más, basta. Y Flores se lleva la ronda de los cuartos de final. Pero también Andrés Quintana esta noche ha vencido a Marlon González del Perú. Señores, ganó mi gallo Andrés Quintana frente a Marlon González avanzando a las semifinales y un Andrés Quintana que mostró que en cuanto a boxeo... I look at it here, and the reason it's so exciting, right, is the fact that you are fighting for your country. You said all the time here on Combate Global, Campbell McLaren says it. He says they're not just fighting for themselves, they're fighting for the flag. That brings the best out of them. Cope Combate Global, that really highlights that rivalry, does it not? Man, Jimmy, let me tell you, this could be the first time for you, but boy, let's take a listen. El mexicano, el hombre, el azteca, Eric González también, el chico conocido del acompañante, Joel Jiménez, Estados Unidos ante España, cuarto de final, Humberto Vandenay de Perú ante Hugo Prada, representando a Colombia y también Milko Tutto ante Salvador Becerra Jr. Y la fortaleza física en el caso de vos, Pepe, por ejemplo, se Yeah, Jimmy, this is going to be your first time you caught Popo Combate, and I got to tell you, I can just describe it as getting on a roller coaster when it goes up and down with the emotions. And one thing is fighting just to get a victory. Another thing is when they put cash on the line. Some of these guys, you know, they're fighting for their family. They're trying to provide some, 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 some cash for, to buy some food, put some shelter in there, and they are hungry. So to see these dudes coming in here, last time around we had Copa Combate, the first time where we had different parts of the world competing, and it just keeps getting any more, more, and more countries. Because tonight, more than ever, it's mucha más acción. La Copa Combate live tonight, and it starts now. I think we're going to see a ton of exciting fights tonight. We sure do hang on to your seats, ladies and gentlemen, and buckle up. This is a tournament featuring eight countries. First time we got France and Ireland. There is the bracket. If you want to print it, follow it up on your iPad. All about the drama, the intensity. Malumba looked very confident compared to that quarter final fight he had against Peru's Sarauz. Martin, lead us to it. Yeah, so right there here, this is an armbar escape attempt by Malambo that he turned into an opportunity to rain down some strikes, get the back of uh, Barata there too, but definitely, without a doubt, I think the Irishman put a stamp on this one, and this was, he was not controlled, got to use his range, and land those big counter strikes like that one right there, that man, he, I think he just punched his ticket to the final. And now either men held back, I think that was impressive. Leo's got nothing to be ashamed of there. They gave it all for that whole five minutes, and it was just fierce. Both men trading, but then you can see that Cordero started to overpower Leo. Leo on his heels, taking a lot of punishment, and then eventually, right here, boom, there it is, and it's lights out. 
say that Malambo had the advantage Whoa. because Malambo just took a shot right there. I don't know who's more hurt. Both guys stumbling. Oh, they're just laying it on. Whoa, Cadero stumbling now too. Malambo smells it. Cadero gets the takedown. Be in his eyes, right there. It is where we're yeah where we're seeing it right there. But I'll tell you what, it is these last 20 seconds. Now Malambo, Malambo could do something here and just starts posture up and start throwing. Your flags, wave them proudly. Both these men Ten have represented left. your countries. Who's gonna get it? Right. Oh, the chills. Here we go. From Ireland, the Black Mamba. Congratulations, Ireland. Copa Combate. New countries, new fighters, same awesome trophy. Eight fighters from eight different countries will go head to head for two nights of non-stop action in the world's toughest tournament. Oh, oh, man. Only one will be crowned the winner. Country pride is on the line. Who will you be rooting for? I got to tell you, Jimmy Smith, alongside Rodolfo Roman, I'm so excited for this for a couple reasons. I've called a lot of tournaments, and one thing is you talk about the national pride on the line. It's also the styles of so many different countries, different backgrounds. They come in there with different skill sets, and you can see kind of what each country does well and how it comes together to make a great tournament in Miss Martial Arts. I love that every single time. Oh, I can't wait for a leader this year to put the bow on this gift, uh, the wrap of the bow. Get it confused here. I'm not getting so hyped already, Jim. It's been a <laughs> yeah. long night. To put a bow on a <laughs> package pack. that there has been is. amazing yeah. all year at Combate no, Global. Stuff. We've had weeks and weeks of finishes Woo. tonight. Absolutely no different. But next week, oh, the it stallion. keeps on rolling. Next time around, when we're back on the 21st of October, Jimmy, Ernesto Stallion Ibarra. We've called this dude. Yeah. You've called it before. Fast, furious, effective hands. A treat to watch inside La Haula. Can't wait. Well, tonight it was absolutely incredible from start to finish. We said it was fighters looking to make their mark, to find their spot in Combate Global. And guess what? When it came to Cruz Garcias, Nicole Aguirre, when it came to Anthony Jagel, these are guys that won fights and gals that put the rest of the division on notice. Jimmy Smith, Rodolfo Roman, Campbell McLaren, everybody behind the scenes, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.